Well, hello, hello, my lovely angels. This is your girl Sim back with another episode of The Sim Squad. Hi. So I am here for my first ever Western Wednesdays. This was an idea from one of you guys, and I absolutely loved it and decided to adapt it. Adopt it, adapt it. My English sometimes is like. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna give her a thanks in the comments or in the description uh, because I do not know her user and I'm not sure if she would want to be mentioned but uh, I had done a vote system and she had actually come up with this uh, idea and I loved it and this is why I'm starting this and I'm starting this as my new year resolution as well because I did want to like start doing some western perfumes as well not just uh, uh, Middle Eastern fragrances because I do buy a few Western as well to try out the dupe comparisons and sometimes I just like a Western fragrance and I want to use it and try it and now I have so many so I <laughs> would love to share them with you as well and show you what I like and not like from the Western counterparts. So let's start with the first one. This is by Mugler perfumes and this is the Angel Noah. Now I got this some time ago, a while ago, and I kept telling you guys that I'm going to do a review comparing the Middle Eastern counterparts for this perfume but I haven't gotten around to do it and I'll do it soon. This is the Angel Noah and that's how the Angel Star looks like. This is a 30ml because uh, for, quite frankly like I can only afford 30ml or 20ml and I would love to buy decans as opposed to full bottles but we don't get them over here easily in Dubai. You get either 50 ml or 100 ml only. Now this perfume like smells definitely similar to, by the way the star sta stands like this, yeah, you don't have to make it lie down, it actually has like a way, it can actually stand in many different ways. But this perfume, it's a fresh floral, although it's categorized as an amber floral on Fragrantica, I don't think so, I think this is a very fresh floral and on Fragrantica it's got 3.8 and I can understand exactly why. Okay, now you have so many Middle Eastern counterparts for this, right? Like I personally think none of them even come close to, they do come close to it, but not close enough to be called a dupe. Like you have Mayar, you have uh, Alive by Mason, Alive now, sorry, by Mason Alhambra. You have so many other ones that are compared to this and I'm going to make a list of everything that's compared to this and I'm going to try and make a video. But to be honest with you, this one, the difference between this and the other ones are that this one doesn't have that bothering green note and I was wondering why because like when I received this of course I instantly sprayed it didn't compare it to anything else and I was like why do I not like the other perfumes because I just automatically assume because all the reviews have been saying that that especially Mayar is like a very close dupe to Angel Noah and I'm like why do I get so irked with Angel Noah uh, with the Mayar and why do I like this one because this one actually has the greenness as a freshness and this is how I think a good green fragrance should smell like now this although it's like a floral that greenness like it smells like not the back side of a <laughs> florist shop where there are too many cut uh, stems Mayar and Alive now they do smell like something you would smell at the back of the florist shop this one smells like at the front of the florist shop you still have the stem there but the florals are the dominating factor the top notes for this are raspberry and lychee middle notes of damask rose and the base notes of akigala wood and benzoin now, it smells like a very basic fragrance in my opinion. The raspberry, lychee and rose are the dominating ones but you know it's not leaning towards like Delina or any of those dupes because of that lack of that certain green bitter note like rhubarb or I don't know what else people put as a green note but that doesn't exist in this and I like it especially because of that because now it's just a very pretty floral. Now so having said that this is definitely a spring summer fragrance because in winter, I feel like it would not shine as much as it would as in summer and you would actually feel nice wearing this in spring summer because it would actually make you feel good, fresh, you know, like pretty, you know, when you're sweaty and everything, <laughs> it will make you actually feel nice about yourself. Now, my favorite, favorite fragrance houses ever used to be Jean-Paul Gaultier and Thierry Mugler. This is before it was taken over by L'Oreal. Ever since it's been taken over by L'Oreal, I literally have not been getting very impressed by Mugler fragrances and this is just another, another example of that. Like it's a nice fragrance but it's not that Mugler uh, reputation where it would smell so different that you would it would become polarizing, you know. You know the whole 
uh, jazz about uh, alien and angel teams and you know how people who like angel doesn't they don't like alien and uh, vice versa but those were like really polarizing scents but they were epic legendary fragrances people still use it as their signature scents including me uh, alien is my signature scent i wear that a lot you know maybe off late i've been wearing them less because i have so many perfumes as you can see in my background but it doesn't have that magic of Thierry Mugler, God rest his uh, soul. He used to create masterpieces and this one is just another pretty floral. So is it nice? Yes. Is it anything special? No. Would I like actually use this? I might, but I would be using this as layering because I do not like smelling generic. Like that's one thing about me. Like I would want to stand out when it comes to fragrances. You know what it smells like? It smells like those... Uh, Recently, I think I smelled this uh, pear uh, naturals, the body wash, and it was the pomegranate one. And I wasn't using it, but layering that with this one, I think it's the same fragrance, almost the same fragrance, you know? So like, yeah, if you, if you like those kind of uh, scents that smell slightly like a body wash as well, like go for it. This is super feminine. This has no Middle Eastern vibe at all because it's a Western Wednesday. Why would it be Middle Eastern? I don't know why I just said that, but yeah. Uh, the projection is like two feet and the longevity is around six hours. I would give this a six out of ten. It's nothing revolutionary. It is nothing that will wow you and you'll be like, <gasps> I need this perfume in my life. No, it's not. And the celebrity I would give this to would be Millie Brown from Stranger Things. Yeah. Why? Because it smells young and I don't know, like she's young. She's kind of innocent and everything. So I don't know, like it, it makes, it reminds me of her. Next one is another gourmand, which is, which was on my list for a very long time, especially like a couple of y'all, and you know who you are, a uh, few of my very, very regular followers, friends on YouTube actually suggested this and I'm so happy I bought it. Okay, my initial experience with this was not positive because the first time I smelled this, I was like, no. And then I like, like throughout the day, I kept smelling it on myself and I just like started liking so much and recently I met one of my friends and I hugged her and we met like briefly for like a few minutes and then she left and she actually called me back and she asked me what perfume are you wearing because it's all over me right now and I'm loving it. It is none other than Lolita Land by Lolita Lempike, Lempica. So it has this beautiful cap. Oh my gosh, look at that. It's a deer a fawn or something but it has wings and it's really pretty and the bottle is like also so gorgeous so pretty lolita lempike uh, it's a perfume brand which is owned by a artist a, a painter and her name is tamara de lempika and her daughter's name is lolita so this is kind of like uh, uh, based on her so it made me like look at her paintings because i was like okay interesting and she has some very beautiful paintings. I'm going to show you some of these over here. They literally look like, you know, her imagination, like it's, it's, it's out of the world. And I really was impressed. Like I really, really, really liked her paintings. And I was so happy to know her now because like, I don't think many people, especially in this part of the world, know of Tamara as an artist, you know? So I'm very interested in getting her other perfumes as well now, uh, especially the Lolita, I think it's called the different, different ones. Now this perfume, Initially, don't spray it on paper, Smell, spray it on yourself because it smells completely different on paper and completely different on your skin. And I've noticed this with all the gourmands, which are very vanilla tonka based and then they have like a little fresh note. That fresh note smells more on clothes and the gourmandiness stays more on your uh, skin. But on the paper, only the fresh notes like are prominent and the gourmand is very less. This smells literally like a like an orange creamsicle. Everybody was like messaging this and I was like orange creamsicle really and I can get it. Like the initial blast of that uh, orangeness is like exactly how a orange creamsicle smells like. But then the gourmand sets in and it is so stunning. This has got 3.99 and it's called a fruity uh, floral. I don't think so. This is like such a gourmand fragrance it's more like a fruity gourmand you know a fruity vanilla fragrance now they say that it smells like dolce gabbana devotion and lira 
Dolce Gabbana Devotion is coming soon. <laughs> Leva, I do not have it yet. I'm planning to get it because these kind of fragrances, these are like my typical, the typical fragrance Simi wears, right? The top notes for this are Bellini, Italian Mandarin, Orange, Pepper, Lemon, Grapefruit and Lime. Middle notes of White Peach, Plum, Blackcurrant, Jasmine Sandbag, Jasmine, Mongolia, sorry, <laughs> Mongolia, <laughs> Magnolia and Rose. And the base notes of Madagascar Vanilla, Licorice, Benzoin, White Musk and Sandalwood. That's a whole lot of notes, but it literally smells to me like orange and the base notes of Vanilla, Licorice and Musk. All the florals, Jasmine, Rose, Magnolia, they are barely there. Other fruits like Peach, Plum, Lemon, Grapefruit, they have that tanginess there, but I don't know. And it's so beautiful, especially when it dries down because that orange thing doesn't like really go away. It reduces definitely, but it stays like throughout till the end. So you do smell different. Now, the good thing about all these, you must be wondering, like, see, you have Nebras, you have Billie Eilish, you have um, Devotion, you have like so many other perfumes. They all are the same, right? They have like this heavy, beautiful vanilla, creamy vanilla base. But then you have like these tangents to it, like like diversions, you know? where this one goes in the direction of uh, orange, you know, like a citrus fruit. And it's amazing because orange, I know there are many with lemon, but the orange one is like, it's so unique to me. And which is why, by the way, this perfume is discontinued. So if you can get your hands on this, like get it. I think I have a 50 ml and I better get my hands on a 100 ml because if this finishes, I'm going to miss it a lot. This is like a super cute fragrance, like literally the you know the visuals like the fawn and like this beautiful garden you know and the fishes flying and their birds chirping fishes flying literally there's a fish that's flying look you know very magical fairy tale like and it smells like a fairy tale as well it smells very unreal it smells very fascinating it smells very enchanted like a weird like enchanted land and you've entered that place and you smell like this oh my gosh like a princess you know with innocence also like you know it's it's very it's a very pretty fragrance i think this will shine in spring and summer to be honest with you despite of it being uh common but i think i can pull this off in daytime uh spring uh, sorry fall winter as well the projection is like only two feet and the longevity is like around six hours it'll be a skin scent and you'll smell it till you wash it off but like for others to smell it you will need to respray this at least every six hours I would spray this after every four hours. My rating for this is 9 out of 10. And I'm getting very tempted to give it 9.5 out of 10. By the time I edit this video, I'm going to decide and put it here. Uh, and uh, I think this is like a perfume that like mostly everybody should love. Unless you do not like gourmands and vanillas, then you will not like it. And the celebrity I want to give this to is Sadie Singh. I gave the other one to Millie. And this one is for Sadie. Like very pretty fragrance. Next up, of course, because talking about gourmands and I've not officially introduced this as a Western. It's your Billie Eilish. I got the 100 ml. It's a number one, perfume number one, Eilish. And this is like your exact dupe. And what's funny is like I had written like, because I was going to do a video with Ali and I've written Nebras. And when I picked this up, this, this stick came in my hand for some reason. So this one smells exactly, exactly. There's literally... Two different bottles, same perfume. It smells like Nebras. Now, remember I said that you have this vanilla base and then they go on tangents. This has that creamy vanilla base as well, vanilla tonka. But the tangent this is going on is like some sort of essential oil, some sort of aromatic. Like they have not listed it. I don't think so. Let me read the notes to you first. The top notes are sugar, red berries and mandarin orange. So it does have that orange, like the same orange they have it in the Lolita Lempike as well. Middle notes of vanilla, cacao, spicy notes and rose. And the base notes of tonka, amber, musk and woody notes. Now, I'm pretty sure that there are some spicy notes which has some sort of either eucalyptus or like, you know, slightly like Vicks Vapor Up, like slightly the same one which you have in Nasheed. But it is like literally like a touch of it, not like Nasheed, which is very like, like overpowering. This is such a gorgeous scent, by the way. It's like literally you're smelling like cocoa. Uh, <laughs> Cocoa, vanilla and tonka. Like it's a mixture of that with some scents that you can't really recognize. You can't pinpoint it. You know, it's also very sugary, sweet. It's super sweet. So if you do not like gourmands, like a pure gourmand, this is like a pure, pure, this is as gourmand as a fragrance can get. It is like literally straight up like something that you'll eat, you know. This is a super feminine fragrance. If a guy wears this, I'll be like a bit like concerned, you know, 
<laughs> no, I'm not. I won't be concerned. It'll just be weird, like smelling such a sweet fragrance on a man. Like it'll be like you know, this is best in autumn or winter, right? It smells like something you would want to drink when it's hot, like a hot chocolate or something. But it's a different drink, and you feel like like you want to drink it. Like I would have assumed that butter beer from Harry Potter would taste like this or smell like this, but like I still have to drink that drink. I haven't had it yet. Yeah, shame. I know because I'm a huge Potter head and I've still not had it. The longevity for this is like three to four hours, but it's a very skin scent, right? So it like kind of only projects like one feet, one and a half feet. So you do do have to go a little heavy handed, but you will always have like this uh, bubble, scent bubble around you for the whole day. Like it doesn't go away. But for it to project, project, like you might have to respray it like after every four five hours. My rating for this is ten out of ten. I don't know why in my notes it's seven point five out of ten. I don't know what I think sometimes. It's like a ten out of ten for sure. And the celebrity, of course, is Miss Eilish because this is her fragrance. I can't think of anybody else. And the packaging, I know some people think it's like uh, obnoxious or vulgar or something. I think it's very beautiful. I think it's a very gorgeous bottle. I'm also planning to get number two and number three. Number two is like the chrome blackish chrome thingy uh, or metallic black thingy. And there's a metallic red one, which is number three, which I have no idea. I don't have any, any idea what it smells like. The second one, I kind of have an idea, but this one is like, it'll be the star forever. Now, last but not the least, the last two fragrances, uh, these have been kindly sent to me from a brand that is like, I am so in awe right now because I never expected to be recognized or be blessed enough to actually be sent these perfumes. Like, I know I shouldn't say that because like, if you don't value yourself, like who will value you, right? Like, but... I was just so surprised when I was contacted by them. I was so happy because I would always see my favorite like perfume reviewers review these perfumes and I like always wanted them, you know. And these are by M. Mikalev. Yes, I have been sent perfumes by M. Mikalev. So the first one, of course, I requested for this one because this is like the Ylang in gold. I have smelled it before. I love this perfume, but I never really owned it. So if you do not know what uh, M. Mikalev perfumes stand for, uh, the perfumes, the bottles are handcrafted, hand designed by Martina Mikalev. And each bottle is different because she actually handcrafts them. So it's like each bottle is made by her. And the nose behind the perfume is Joffrey Nejman. And I hope I'm getting his second name right. It's either Neiman or Nejman. And he's the one who actually designs the fragrances. So it's, it's like a duo and they make these amazing fragrances. Let me show you the first one, which is like, this is why I love this fragrance. By the way, this is a special edition bottle. So it's a little different from the original. But would you look at that? That is like, so every bottle of Ylang in Gold, by the way, this perfume is called Ylang in Gold. It's super heavy, the bottle, and it has this beautiful cap. There are dents in it, like made intentionally that make it so beautiful. And then you have this gold foil on it, which is so pretty. So every bottle has like a different type of gold foil. And of course you have your signatures and the bottle from behind is so beautiful. So all their bottles are from this specific collection. They all look the same. They all have like the same shape and everything, but they come in different bottles. I have a second one as well from them and again it's like the same bottle but a different style but they have other fragrances also this to me like i will treasure it forever because this is one of the first major brands that have actually sent their perfumes across to me like an external like western brand right and of course like i knew how this perfume smelled like and i i was so happy when i told her because she asked me what kind of perfumes i like and when i told her about my liking and i told her but Ylang in gold is like a legendary perfume and so she was like okay I'll have a surprise for you and she sent me this one as well as another perfume so I thank you so much Martina I thank you so much for sending them both to me so I could experience this lovely creation by you when I first smelled this perfume there's like so many words that are trying to come out of my mouth and I'm controlling myself right now because I'm gonna just be like blabbing like in super high speed like I do and you guys are gonna be like what is she talking about but it almost smells like a song or a melody I cannot explain to you and the first thing which came in my mind i don't know why it was sirens you know like a siren song you know like something like that like a myth that is like be dangerously beautiful and then like i was doing a little bit of research about like flowers and ingredients people use in uh, perfumes and i came across this myth about uh, ylang ylang the flower 
and there are so many myths attached to it but my favorite one i'm going to not mention all of them but there was this one particular one which i really liked so there's this couple and they pray to god because they loved each other a lot but they were trying to have babies and they could not so they prayed to the heavens and then they finally got a baby under one condition that the baby the girl she has to be chaste all her life right but then of course because she was so beautiful when she grew up she was like a heavenly looking uh, individual and then of course a man like touched her and she turned into this ylang ylang flower so of course this perfume it reminds me like a, the on first spray you feel like it's a song or a ballad of love or something extraordinary like it is so magical like this is uh, classified as a floral oriental so the top notes for this are geranium and citrus middle notes of sandalwood and ylang ylang and the base notes of coconut and vanilla and on fragrantica it's got 4.44 it's like a lot right it's like 444 it has like the sandalwood ylang ylang like the entire creation is like based around that you have a little citrus opening but it's not citrus to a point where it becomes tart and bothers you it appears like a freshness yeah and the coconut and vanilla also are there in such moderation and they just are appearing as a base note but the middle and base notes they stay linear the lemon like starts becoming very very faint and all you have then is like this sandalwood coconut ylang ylang with a little bit of vanilla the magic literally happens in the combination of sandalwood and ylang ylang and you know when you think of ylang ylang you you might kind of think like it's a very overpowering scent but in this it's done very in a very subtle way so everything smells very subtle it sm smells like dream like like almost like you have smelled this before but you don't know maybe previously from a different lifetime or something like i i can't express how i feel when i smell this fragrance it's a very strange feeling it's nostalgic but it's nostalgic like not from this lifetime almost for me like this would be the perfect fragrance for a bride like ethereal beautiful attractive very mysterious and somewhat like a fairy tale like it's 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 unreal you know so like even the bottle like just imagine like how this bottle looks like and think of a bride and how she would smell like the kind of floral that would be on her you know a very vanilla creamy sandalwoody ylang ylang the projection is around 3 feet but the longevity is 8 plus hours it stays on your skin as a skin scent forever now i have a feeling people might ask me that does this compare to kali's uh, the wedding silky santal yeah the silky santal that one also for me is like a very good bridal fragrance but like this one has like a different feeling altogether it's it's a little bit more fresh in a sense and it's a little bit more floral compared to the other sandalwood by kiali this perfume the notes might like suggest it's a very simple perfume but it's a very sophisticated one like yes you feel like you know you're definitely wearing like a very expensive uh, <laughs> bridal gown and then you've sprayed this all over yourself and you leave a trail behind you like when you walk down the aisle and everybody can smell it and everybody is in awe of you like oh my gosh this fragrance is like amazing to me this is like an all day all weather kind of fragrance because it's very feminine it's very like uh, it's slightly fresh but then it also has a depth of uh, coconut vanilla and your ylang ylang geranium like there in like a like it can hints appearing here and there it's just like a very dreamlike state and i love this perfume because of that i know it comes at a price point but like literally for brides i feel this would be like the perfect perfect fragrance i wish i was wearing white today when i filmed you know because that's literally how it makes you feel it feels like everything is white around you and of course the moment i thought of a celebrity princess diana and her wedding gown came in my mind i just immediately was like purity innocence beauty uh, allure like a kind of uh, sophistication but kindness and gentleness like oh i miss princess diana uh, it reminds me of her it's such a beautiful fragrance for me of course of course it's a 10 out of 10 it's like i can't help it i will definitely wear this like i don't know like if i finish it i'll definitely like get it for myself because once you smell this perfume it's like you can't go back it's you have to keep sniffing it again and again they come in smaller sizes as well but and Mikalev was kind enough to send me like a full bottle of it so i'm so happy that i have this perfume finally with me the second one they've sent me is note vanille and this is supposed to be 
Let me get that bottle. Wait, that doesn't do justice. It has like these studs on it and on the sides it's like this frosting almost, you know. And the cap is the same as the Ylangan gold. How pretty. Now, what does this one smell like? I've smelled something like this in my childhood. Like all these perfumes, I don't know, it smells very classic, very sophisticated. And it almost feels like I either smell this in a lounge or in duty free or somewhere like expensive or went to a, like a pricey hotel and I could smell it over there. Like it has some flowers that are coming out as very classic, not vintage, but like in a classic way. No 20 less amber vanilla. And on Fragrantica, it's got 4.15, which is not bad still. It's still in the fours. The top notes for this are mandarin and citrus. So again, it has like a citrusy opening. Although in my mind, in both these perfumes, the citrus is not like really like a, the dominating note. It's, it's like there's a hint in the opening only. A fresh cold wave of air coming towards you, like a whiff, and then it just disappears. The heart note is jasmine, which is the star of the show. But then also in the base, you have vanilla, rum, cognac, uh, amber, and sandalwood. So again, it's like the super creamy, like, like a boozy vanilla, like a rum vanilla. And this is definitely not the vanilla you're expecting. So it's not like Kayali 28, Vanilla 28, or Vanilla Bourbon by Mix Bar. It's none of that. This one is stepping into the territory of a floral vanilla and just think of it as a jasmine vanilla. Like that's the easiest way I can tell you. The, the notes that are like the most dominant ones, right? But, <laughs> okay, so when I smell this, this is the picture which came in my mind. You're eating like a creamy vanilla cake. Think of like you took two, three bites of morsels of vanilla cake and then you had a sip of Coca-Cola. <laughs> uh, I know it's sounding weird, but this is how it smells like to me. It smells like a vanilla cake, but with the frosting, like a sweet frosting. It's a very, very, very sweet fragrance. If that doesn't make sense, then there's another way I can explain this to you. It smells like a blanket in winter which is like made of uh, silk or cashmere or something but it is something really soft very silky but it's keeping you really warm and then you're having a cake that is a vanilla cake with a slight hint of lemon and grandma has made it for you and you're comfortably sitting on her uh, comfortable sofa and you're cozied up and you're having that cake and your grandmother is wearing like a vintage powdery jasmine scent and she's like far right she's in the kitchen or something and you can get the whiffs of her but like the dominant note is like that uh, rum vanilla cake with like frosting with like slight bit of lemon and that silky feel uh, cozy satiny silky feel uh, in the blanket it's very warm it's very cozy it is definitely slightly vintage leaning by the way uh m Calef uses a very specific sandalwood in their perfumes and you know how uh, Narciso has like a very specific musk they use, which is kind of their, like their signature in all their perfumes. Mikalev has like the sandalwood that they use, I feel, which is like, it kind of ties up the perfumes to one another. You can know it's from the same house. This is like a super feminine fragrance and can only be worn in fall winter. My rating for this is 8.5 out of 10. 8.5 out of 10 just because Although I will want to go and like sniff this again and again, like I might not necessarily wear this a lot, especially in Dubai because of its uh, potency. And probably like this summer, sorry, this fall winter, I'll be using it a lot and then I'll chill with it a little bit, you know. And the celebrity I thought of was uh, Enya singing Anron. You know the theme song? I think it was from Lord of the Rings or something. It's like, it, it reminds me of her beautiful voice and that song especially the way she sang it and the way the entire like rhythm and tune was in that it was so beautiful like it makes you cry it's like a strange thing right that piece of her work will be like epic for the rest of my life it's such a beautiful piece if you've not heard it go listen to it <laughs> this perfume kind of like is a reminiscent of that song you know so that's all for my first ever Western Wednesdays. I need to get used to the word Western Wednesdays because I keep thinking Wicked Wednesdays. <laughs> you know, in school you used to have these uh, Fantastic Four and uh, Naughty Nine and you know, you used to give your group these weird names <laughs> and then you used to have like these uh, 
uh, Wicked Wednesdays and I don't know, something else. I forgot what they were. If you remember, just let me know in the comments. But you know, in my the moment I try to say Western Wednesdays, the Wicked Wednesday comes in my mouth again and again. Totally unnecessary information that I just gave you. but. <laughs> Guys, I hope you like this one and I'm going to have like uh, some new, some old fragrances coming up in the Western Wednesdays. If you have any specific perfumes that are like really, really good, please try and not tell me like extremely expensive ones, like because I will not be able to buy them. But a designer perfume that's like price tag, you know, and plus like uh, cheapies that are like really good as well, like do let me know. I have like some very interesting fragrances, especially for fall and winter coming up soon and I'll also be doing a full review of the Mason Francis Cordesian's uh, fragrance wardrobe for her. I'll do that one in one specific video because I think those are like seven perfumes and it'll take time to review them all. So that's it for today guys. By the way, I have a code for uh, the Mikalev perfumes. I'll mention that in the description. I also have codes for Khadlaj, like you know, and a couple of other brands. I'll keep mentioning them as and how I get them and I hope it helps you like you know uh, it won't really make me much money but like if you do buy I do get some part of the commission so let me just tell you that as a disclosure yeah uh, I'm also getting uh, some samples from other brands which are also like well known and I'm very happy that I'm also collaborating with them so my hard work is paying off and it's all thanks to you guys to bring me to this level I've reached 10k I've not like officially thanked you guys because I feel like like listing your <laughs> milestones kind of jinxes you okay i'm old school like that and i have all these um, superstitions which are unnecessary but yeah i have touched 10k i've uh, gone beyond that now touch wood and i intend to go much longer and achieve my first milestone of 100k and that's when i'll celebrate <laughs> thank you guys so much for sticking by me for encouraging me for always like giving me ideas and actually helping me grow and not just saying good things and you know like and i stay stagnant and i like it when you guys tell me like it'll be better if you mention so and so and everything so do let me know what i can do that will make you make me or my videos much more beneficial for you or more informative for you thank you so much guys and i'll see you in the next one see ya bye